again for taking some time today. Uh, today we're going to be doing a webinar on the 10 key steps to a new internet. The focus here is going to be uh, the process of evaluating and procuring a new internet. Uh, many of you on the call are probably thinking about evaluating and launching an internet for this year. Uh, we worked with many clients uh, in the same shoes. So we want to combine our effort and knowledge to make this as easy as possible for you guys. So kudos to you for joining our webinar today. This will help you get ahead on your new internet project so you can smoothly implement one for some time this year. Um, this is uh, webinar is appropriate whether you are building an internet internally or if you are thinking about buying an off the shelf product like, uh, like ThoughtFarmer. Uh, a little bit more about me. My name is Amol, as Christy mentioned. I'm the sales director here at Thought Farmer. Been with Thought Farmer since uh, 2011. So over these last six and a half years, uh, I've worked with many organizations and understand, you know, kind of what makes a successful internet launch and where some of those pitfalls may be when you come across, uh, that you may come across during your project phase. So why this webinar? Uh, this is uh, hopefully gonna provide you a clear, logical, but easy template to uh, help you get through things faster. And again, we're also gonna cover those uh, potential pitfalls as well. So we're gonna be speaking very high level about internet strategy, uh, implementation, and not get too much into the details uh, because they are all of these kind of different steps are, are very big topics. Um, we do have a lot of resources for this on our website, uh, including our internet strategy ebook and our internet's 101 page. Now, this particular webinar is going to be um, referencing our Internet Buyer's Workbook. So this is a resource uh, that we have available on our website. Uh, it outlines the 10 steps or stages we'll be talking about today in more detail, as well as give some examples and stories to help you get through your Internet journey. Now, you'll notice that as we go through this webinar, uh, the webinar is really kind of focused on stages one, two, three. Uh, don't worry, we're not gonna go over the over the hour time there. We just feel like the beginning stages are the most critical. So we've concentrated most of our time uh, in those areas. All right, so step one, uh, determining business objectives. So this is very important. Uh, this is aligning your internet uh, with uh, essentially the goals of the internet uh, for the business. Now, business objectives come from asking, you know, why are you building an internet? The first thing that people often do is, you know, conduct a survey. Uh, in fact, this internet project may have sprung from a survey. A lot of these surveys are, you know, these annual surveys that you do with your staff, kind of asking, um, you know, how they feel about different areas of the business. And usually, like, one of the questions is around communications, um, around how, you know, they feel like they're connected to the organization. And sometimes there's, like, areas of opportunity uh, when it comes to engagement. And so a lot of times people are thinking about the internet as kind of a, one of those tools to help increase that employee engagement metric. So a really good way to be able to categorize your business objectives is kind of like in these three different areas. Uh, preferential, so how do you feel about something? Uh, the opinion, the feelings, the preference. A really good example of this is uh, satisfaction scores, right? So either you're very satisfied or you're not satisfied at all. The kind of internet use case around this is measuring satisfa satisfaction when it's the old internet versus the new internet. Uh, a lot of times what we would recommend is baselining, right? So if you have an internet now, if you have the ability to see some analytics, make sure you record that, and then you have a really good understanding on where you're starting from. And then when you launch the new internet, measure that stuff again, right? And see if there's been some improvements there. A lot of times what we would like to be able to say is um, you have your business objectives, try to align that with some kind of metric that you can measure against. The second there is evaluative. So how is something working? Uh, the performance. Uh, the example is uh, user success rates on finding content, right? So if you say, hey, uh, task testing is an example of this, so online task testing where you can ask uh, staff members to go find the HR policy. And they kind of go through that uh, journey of finding that uh, particular um, policy, and you want to see how successful they are in being able to accomplish that. The, the usefulness of this is that it's very um, a good way to be able to kind of figure out what processes on the internet are broken. The last one there is generative. So that's open-ended, suggest possibilities for further directions. There's no real clear hypotheses up front. So this is more about collecting uh, vocabulary and perspective. Uh, and so this is a good way to be able to kind of outline your, your, your different business objectives in um, different categories. 
All right, so the best method in kind of understanding you know, requirements and understanding the needs of your staff, we find is live interviews, right? So this is with uh, frontline employees, you know, different parts of the business, uh, different stakeholders. Uh, how many you should do is you know, obviously the more the better, but at least shoot for 10, right? And so if you can kind of get, again, a diverse um, the demographic of the organization, right? So you got frontline employees, you got people in the back end, uh, admin people, finance people, um, executive people, and kind of understand uh, again, you know, um, what they are using the internet for, and um, having these kind of live interviews. So some of the questions that you might want to be kind of thinking about there is firstly try to start lean right so get out there and just talk to people as you're going along you can kind of refine your script uh, as you go there uh, and don't be afraid of letting the conversation veer off course uh, sometimes this is when you uncover the best things uh, and then also let them know how the information will be used right so a lot of times people will open up more if they have an understanding on how this data is going to be used afterwards so here's some examples of some interview questions so something that you're going to notice here so describe the function of your team and department what does a typical day look like for you very open-ended questions right so this is again you want them to kind of encourage talk and then you know just kind of let them know or let you know how they're using the internet or even more so how, what is their day-to-day -day like right how are they completing tasks and you may be able to um, kind of find some things there where there's areas of opportunity that maybe your internet can provide some value there as well so notice what these questions are not right they're not what features do you want on your new internet because everybody's gonna say everything right they're gonna say we want Facebook we want native apps we want uh, you know push notifications but really what you really want to do here is again just kind of figure out how they are completing tasks in their organization um, they focus on bigger high-level goals uh, that lead, lead to more improved engagement and efficiency. So what is the business need here? So what you're trying to do with this interview data is uh, pick out interesting insights, look for themes and patterns, you know, especially stuff that is kind of across the organization, you know, regardless of what department you're in. That type of stuff there is low-hanging fruit later on when you are launching the internet, right? Because you really want to kind of knock those things out of the park uh, initially there because it is impacting everyone, you know, when it comes to requirements there. And then also socialize these findings with the rest of your team. So, you know, everybody's aware of kind of um, what the output was from these interviews. All right, so while you're determining your business objectives, it's sometimes a good idea to kind of align it with the purposes of the internet. Now, there's a fellow named James Robertson. He is based out of Australia. He's written, I don't know, I think at least eight books on internets, right? So he knows, he knows a lot about internets. And uh, one of the things that he wrote about a while back was the five purposes of the internet. So we'll just kind of describe that here now. Firstly, there's content, right? This is um, kind of the main anchor for any good internet central repository for published information, right? So this is corporate, this is business unit specific. It may be structured, it may be unstructured. The second there is communication. So the single channel that reaches all staff, right? Covering top-down communication, covering lateral communication, covering bottom-up communication as well. The third piece there is collaboration, uh, the platform that connects staff and helps them to work better together. Uh, collaboration may be within a specific area, you know, such as a project or across organizational boundaries. Now, collaboration piece, like you're gonna have people that are within the same office, they're going to be able to do face-to-face -face meetings and they're going to be able to collaborate that way. But there's going to be a lot of organizations where you have these inherent silos of physical location, right? You may be in totally different countries, really. And so how do you kind of encourage those staff members, especially if they're doing very similar work, to be able to connect, right, and share best practices? Uh, one of the analogies that we use here or kind of the terms that we use is cross-pollination. Right? You want the ability for people to connect with one another, share their best practices, and then from an organizational perspective, you want to be able to capture that knowledge somewhere. Um, the fourth piece there is culture, uh, a site that reflects the current culture of the organization, as well as supporting ongoing culture change activities. Uh, every organization has its own unique culture, right? And I think like the internet, uh, can be a good way to be able to kind of express that culture. Uh, and again, your culture is your people, right? And giving them the opportunity of getting onto the internet, being aware of, you know, maybe some of the community events that you guys are doing in the organization there. Uh, and again, being able to provide some feedback on that as well. Now, the last piece there is activity. So this is, I am going to the internet to do something. 
right? So not just reading, seeing, uh, reading things or consuming information, but it could be like downloading a form. Uh, it could be some kind of large scale online business processes. So again, simple forms, calendars for scheduling, employee onboarding packages and processes. Um, and you know, if you're like in the manufacturing uh, space there, you know, managing those uh, processes as well. So again, going to the internet and getting something done. All right, so goals should be clear and specific, right? So once you're done these interviews, analyze your data and again, look for those patterns. Uh, if you are able to kind of look at some of the requirements that you're seeing there, and then again, go back to those five purposes of the internet and align it, right? And say, okay, this one makes sense with this, within this purpose. And then you're gonna be able to kind of see some, some areas where you definitely have maybe more kind of objectives kind of fitting in. So you may have like a lot of stuff around content. You may have stuff all around communication, but then maybe there's some gaps there around activity or culture. And so that could be areas of opportunity for yourself to kind of think of, okay, you know, maybe there's a few things that we can do here uh, to be able to kind of really take advantage of a, of a, of a modern internet, introducing that in the, in the workplace there. Now work in phases as well, right? Because, um, the one thing that's going to happen here is that once you do all of these interviews, you're going to get a whole bunch of requirements that are going to be on your, your document there. You may get like, you know, 10 to 15 different ones, right? And so if you can kind of really focus in on, uh, you know, the four or five initially there, uh, they're kind of like surface to the top, um, a phased approach could be a good way to go, go about that and kind of really kind of focus in on those areas. Now, here is a pitfall. Disagreements among departments on priority. Right, so you may have the finance team that says, you know what, this PO completion is the most important policy that we have in the organization. It should be right on the front homepage, right? And marketing may think otherwise. So what you really should be doing here is kind of uh, identifying where these potential, potential objectives may be, host some sort of meeting, and use silent voting to be able to determine the top priorities as a group. Right, so again, a sense of ownership for everyone and group consensus. So we've used a lot of these kind of techniques when it comes to our professional services. The silent voting is, is you know, a good way to be able to go about that. All right, so in summary here, determining business objectives is a way to outline the business value that can be accomplished with the internet. So what are the jobs to be done? What are the internet features that can potentially help? And now where is that common fit? All right, step two, uh, assembling a team. So the key components to a successful internet project team is that it has authority, commitment, and agility to move things forward. Now there's a potential pitfall in this stage too, right? So that is not choosing a team enough early and not involving the right people. This can derail your internet project later. In some cases, we've seen like you know communications, right? They're leading the internet project. They're kind of doing it on their own. Uh, they work on it for a while. They go through some kind of vendor evaluation. They head over to IT with this final recommendation, and IT says, you know what? It doesn't meet our technical requirements, right? So you've done all this legwork uh, just to be told that uh, you may have to go back and kind of start again. Right, so from a comms perspective, get your IT team involved early. IT is your friend. They'll be able to kind of help you guide through that technology kind of aspect to the internet. And the opposite stands, uh, stands true as well, right? So if your project is IT led, have those business owners involved early and they can help provide validation, right? That you're going down the right path here. So what does a project team look like? So let's kind of focus firstly on the core team. So the core team usually involves the communications manager. It usually involves the IT manager. It may involve the HR manager. You'll have an executive sponsor that's involved, uh, a project manager, and then also an internet manager. So that's if you have one. Now in some capacity, but not as the core team, you'll have other departments um, like finance or administrative uh, folks, maybe frontline staff if you're a bank or retail organization, involved at times as well. When they are involved, it's more about, again, needs assessment and then also confirmation, right? That the core project team has an understanding on kind of the needs of the organization. Then also once you kind of get into that vendor evaluation phase, sometimes bringing in those different departments and say, hey, look, we, we kind of shortlisted to these three or four different uh, vendors. What do you think? Do, will they help you know fulfill the use cases that you mentioned earlier on? So again, they usually come in and out, these additional departments, but these core people here, the comms people, the, the IT people, the executive sponsor and the project manager are kind of heavily involved throughout the entire duration of the project. 
So now, if you don't have an internet manager, you may be considering whether you might need one. Now, for organizations that are you know, 250 employees or more, this is typically a good idea. Now, if a full FTE dedicated to the internet is not viable for the organization, you should still try to designate at least one person to have responsibility for the internet. Now, it could be a subset of their, their job responsibilities, but it's like, you know, one of their main focuses. So if you introduce a modern internet, um, having a distributed governance model, you know, where meaning uh, each department kind of owns their area of the internet, the job of the internet manager is more overseeing, right? That the internet is updated uh, and you are meeting the goals of those initial business objectives, right? So they're measuring stuff and they're always going back to that initial artifact of uh, the, the outline of the business objectives for the internet. And you're just making sure that you're hitting those. You may find that, yep, you know, for a lot of the stuff that we are, we are doing well, but then you might find that through the, the analytics measurement that uh, some areas of opportunity as well, right? So that kind of gives you some real hard data uh, as an internet manager to go ahead and uh, be able to make some changes there. Now, how do you, you know, figure out who is a good internet manager or if you are looking to maybe uh, post a job posting for that, uh, we do have resources available. Uh, you can find that on our Internet's 101 page, uh, giving you a bit of a, an idea of a job description that you would like to kind of see for a typical internet manager there. All right, step three, uh, communicate your requirements. So language is going to be very important here in how you position those, uh, those requirements. Sometimes you get stuck in this mode of, of feature focused, right? We want Facebook-like activity screens. We want Google Analytics integration. We want a staff directory. What you really want to try to do is also communicate the who, the why, and the how. So user focus requirements can really provide that type of context, right? The intention here is again to communicate these requirements in much more detail and really understand the use case around those requirements. So this is a really good example here. We really advocate kind of people looking at requirements in this type of format, right? So uh, what you're seeing here, we'll kind of run through this, is there's the original feature, the first one there, Facebook-like features. Now, instead of kind of just using that, uh, it may be a better way of going about it like this, where you say, as an employee, I would like to, to be able to post updates about things I'm working on so that I can keep my team up to date when I do things which may be relevant for them as well. So there you see the who, there you see the what, and there you see the why. So the second point, Google Analytics integration. So really what you're looking for is a person, the internet manager is looking at usage statistics to see how the internet is being used and report back to the team. And the third point there, or the third example is user import via Excel. So as an IT director, bulk management of users, so I can easily manage internet users. So once you kind of have this outlined in this way, what you'll find though, is that you'll be able to be more specific when it comes to uh, the actual requirement, right? So now you see on the right-hand side there, the actual feature that you may be looking for within the internet. So the first point, instead of Facebook-like features, this employee was trying to just post updates for the team. Uh, he was really looking for, or you, what you're looking for is like a group type of scenario. So group pages on the internet. The second one there is an internet manager looking for stats. What he's really looking for is internet statistics, right? So Google Analytics is different than internet statistics, right? But the thing is that again, they're looking for something to be able to measure. Uh, the third one there is the IT director, you know, being able to kind of import Excel uh, user information. Um, what they're really looking for is Active Directory integration, right? So AD, uh, I think in most organizations, you know, 90% of the time people are using it, but if you could be very specific on what you're looking for there, it's gonna make it um, uh, a lot easier to be able to go out there and try to be able to fill these needs. So step four is um, defining your business constraints. One thing to mention here as well is that um, this is good for you as an organization, but this is also good for the vendor to be able to see this as well, right? Because I think that when a vendor like, you know, like us, right, when we see people positioning their requirements in this way, it gives us a lot of confidence that that team that we're working with on the other end there has a really good knowledge of a kind of what the, the intentions, what the goals are for the internet. And also from a vendor perspective, uh, it allows us to be able to demonstrate these particular requirements um, much better, right? It values your time. Uh, and again, uh, from a from a vendor perspective, if we if you come across this and you see that you don't hit a lot of them, you could be very upfront about that as well. And you guys are, you know, you're providing a, a better type of conversation to take place with that vendor, which I think is important. 
All right, so again, step four, uh, defining business constraints. So, okay, we've got objectives, we've got requirements, we've got ourselves a team. Now it's um, the internet plan is coming together, right? So, however, uh, the kind of the thing here is that all of the tasks that we've been focused on so far is around the internet itself and what it's going to accomplish. Now we need to shift gears and think about how we're going to implement this internet inside the organization. So what factors you'll need to consider to make that a success. So step four here again, define your business constraints. So some fundamental items to consider right away. Schedule, cost, and scope. So what is a reasonable timeline? Uh, note just here for you guys yourselves is that typically we see internet projects take about three to five months from when they sign a contract to actual launch, right? Uh, content migration being the most time consuming item here uh, within the project. So that's schedule, cost, uh, it may be worthwhile to do some initial pricing inquiries, get a basic understanding of uh, what kind of budget you might need for a new internet. If you're building from scratch, uh, development, future maintenance costs, future hardware costs need to be considered as well. The third point there is scope. This is very important. Don't try to do too much at once, right? Again, oftentimes you're gonna come up with a list of different requirements that you need. It's gonna be up to 15 possibly uh, during your needs assessment phase. Again, if you can kind of prioritize the top five or so items and focus on that for launch and knock those items out of the park, um, the rest of the requirements, you can kind of do a phased approach. But really what you want to try to do is look for that whole low-hanging fruit that, um, you know, that is going to be something that is impacted by the whole organization. Uh, a really good example is a robust staff directory, right? This is where we see a lot of the initial wins uh, with uh, a lot of the clients that move forward with Thought Farmer, right? Because sometimes, you know, Finding people's contact information is a real pain point in organizations, but more times than not, you know, finding people with particular skill sets, right? So like I need to find somebody who speaks French that is good at mortgage insurance, right? Or, or part of a particular branch. So if you can use the staff director to be able to kind of find that, um, again, staff really see that to be uh, of great value to them. Then also ensuring that that, um, that content that you're storing there, it's intuitive to be able to find, right? Because one of the big pain points that we see with a lot of organizations is, um, you know, where content is living. You know, oftentimes it's living in a file, in a file server somewhere, and that path to be able to find it is really difficult. So if you can kind of decrease that and make that much more efficient, again, oftentimes we see that as low hanging fruit um, and one of the top requirements for an internet. So really kind of focus in on those things, you know, intuitive navigation, you know, um, finding ways to be able to connect staff with one another, that's really how you're gonna build the momentum and kind of introduce and get the buy-in for this new application in the organization. All right, so when it comes to any internet project, it's really more about, it's just, it's more than just the technology, right? So when it comes to cost, it may not be only the technology cost, you may also wanna consider professional services to support some of your project tasks. Uh, we typically see most internet projects kind of fall into three buckets. Um, the first one is content, right? So the, the kind of tasks within the content stream is content strategy, uh, content inventory and migration training, and that information architecture design, right? So that main navigation design there. Um, the second one there, technology stream, right? So having your IT team, uh, if you're going to be doing on-premise install the site, right? The integration with Active Directory, any kind of specific customizations that you might need, right? So that's kind of the stream there that your, your IT team will be um, very much focused on. The third stream is engagement, right? So the branding of the site, uh, being able to do some kind of launch and communications planning, uh, training, um, being able to kind of, um, you know, have some type of contest running on the internet where people are filling out their profile pages. But again, these three streams, you can't just focus on one, you gotta have some kind of um, parallel type of activities taking place uh, between all three streams. And uh, one thing to note here as well is that, um, the pitfalls in this area. Uh, you may not have a clear owner, right? Uh, you may be under-resourced for the project. There may be a, le a lack of executive priority. Uh, there may be employee turnover, and there's no clear launch plan. 
then you can avoid these particular pitfalls if you're prepared. So sometimes it may be worthwhile to obtain some professional services from experts in the internet space that have done this, you know, hopefully hundreds of times, right? This increases your chances of success. Now, either the vendor you select is gonna have professional services, or maybe you're already working with some kind of third party for a firm that you are aligned with, right? So remember that uh, a successful internet launch is something that will impact everyone in the organization. So it's gonna get a lot of recognition and praise uh, if it is done right. Step five, uh, researching your options. So there's a few big questions that you wanna be able to address right off the bat, right? So the first one there is um, build versus buy. This person. <laughs> Somebody actually unmuted themselves there. Okay, so build versus buy. So what makes most sense? Uh, I always go back to the requirements and uh, a lot of times, you know, within those requirements, um, you're gonna be able to kind of assess out right from there, whether you should be building uh, an internet from scratch or you should be buying an internet. Now, if you find that a lot of your requirements are fairly standard, right? So. We need an area for news information. We need an area that is a knowledge base for policies. We need a staff directory. A lot of times standalone products out there will have these as built-in features, so they should be highly considered. Now, if you find that a lot of your requirements are unique to your business, specific workflows or specific integrations with other proprietary software, uh, a build may be a better option. Now, generally speaking, an off-the-shelf product will be cheaper in the long run, right? Because a lot of times, you know, we see some organizations that are building internets through SharePoint. You know, there is SharePoint for uh, that the free version of SharePoint, but it's really, it's, it's so basic that it doesn't provide real great value. Um, uh, doesn't provide as great value uh, uh, with that free version. You need to spend a lot of time developing on top of that to be able to get to something that is useful for your staff. Right? But again, it really is dependent on those requirements. Um, if you do find that you are <clears throat> some kind of manufacturing organization, or again, maybe a credit union out there, and you um, have a lot of these kind of core banking applications that need some kind of workflows that are associated with the internet, sometimes again, a build, a build will be better there. Okay, second question. Do I go with like an internet or do I go with one of those uh, <clears throat> chat apps that are out there now? Slack being like the most popular one that we're seeing right now. So again, gotta go back to that requirement stock, right? Chat apps are great for unstructured dialogue and quick responsiveness. Uh, they're not so good when it comes to structured content and searchability, right? So if you can get an internet that provides a combination of the, of the two, you know, a good CMS platform with some social capabilities like commenting or microblogging or ad mentioning, that's a really good hybrid solution. And usually that can kind of fit the bill, right? Uh, we do have some organizations that say, hey, listen, we want instant messaging within our internet. Um, you know, there is a whole lot of variety of, of instant messaging platforms that are out there that really focused in on that, that it is really two different types of social business software, right? Again, one is more so the social networking side, uh, and the other one is, again, something like a social internet, which is more for that structured content and that findability of content. All right, third question. This is gonna be specifically for the IT team, self-hosted or cloud? Now, this really depends on the IT strategy in the organization. So you gotta get them involved early, uh, and confirm their preference or whether they're actually open to both. Um, over the last few years, we have definitely have seen more organizations switch over to cloud. Now, cloud has improved security um, nowadays especially, and is often much easier to be able to handle from a software management perspective. But again, that is something that you need to be able to address with your IT team so that you're not wasting time. Right, because there's a lot of vendors out there that only provide cloud uh, implementations. Uh, and if your team is looking for on-premise, right, that can actually save you a lot of time uh, and a lot of uh, you know, conversations with these vendors um, if you know that what you need to do is find on-premise. Right, So something to keep in mind there as well. All right. Oops, let's go back in here. So once you've received feedback on those three big questions, the next step is planning for flexibility. So some things to consider. When you are evaluating uh, software, the first thing is configuration. Right? So how much can I change about the product without developer help? So examples are page templates or profile fields. So again, this is going to be either build versus buy. Right? So if you're building something on SharePoint, that still has to be something that you keep in mind. 
right? You know, can I create a page template easily or do I need like a technical degree to be able to accomplish that, right? So configuration, which is different than customization, right? So customization is um, a lot of times the way I look at it is, is coding. I need some kind of coding um, kind of uh, experience there to be able to customize the platform. So additional development on top of the platform, you need to consider that. Uh, what type of technology is it? How are customizations built? Is there developer documentation? Is there tools to be able to do that? And also, can I leverage the team at that vendor as well for customization? So configuration versus customization. Usually configuration, again, some kind of like tab, right? Where you can kind of switch things up that way. You don't need coding, whereas customization, you do need coding. Um, integrations, right? This is uh, important because a lot of times the internet is gonna be like that central tool uh, digital workplace tool in the organization and uh, you will want some kind of integrations with other tools uh, that are being used in the organization as well. The one big one that we see always is that Active Directory integration. The Active Directory one in particular is, is good to have because a lot of times what it will provide is single sign-on, right? You'll be surprised at how much of a barrier a login screen is for people accessing an application, you know, especially the internet. Right? So if you can make it that somebody goes into their office, that logs into the, uh, the network using their AD, username and password, they open up their browser, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, they're automatically logged into the internet. It's the default for their browser. They're actually going to use that internet a lot more um, than if they had to go through some kind of different username and password that they're used to uh, and a different login. Right? You just will see user adoption jump so much higher. Uh, some other integrations that we see quite often is uh, Google Drive and then also Office 365 integration. Right? So this is where documents are living elsewhere. You may not be considering to move all of your documents over to the internet, but you want to make those visible on the, uh, on the internet there as well. But it's something that you should keep in mind that uh, integrations are great, uh, but also in integrations could be um, prohibitive as well, right? Because you may have a lot of people asking for a lot of different types of integrations. What you really need to do there is ask the question, why? You know, why should we have this integration? Does it make sense? Or is this just something that's driven by the IT team? You know, like we want integration with uh, a help desk ticketing system, right? Maybe a link is better, but like, do you really need a robust integration between the two? Um, so just asking yourself the question, why? All right, step six to 10, <laughs> we're gonna cover it super quickly. We'll put them all in one big lump sum here. Uh, it's all about evalu uh, evaluating and decision. So for some companies, uh, procurement is gonna have to get involved here in these stages. Uh, and maybe in the beginning stages there, they might be involved in an evaluation, right? They could be the ones that are owning the RFP, sending that out to people, um, or they may be involved later once you've selected a vendor and now they're doing the contract negotiation at that point. So step six. So step six is now we're in the evaluation phase. We are reaching out to um, vendors uh, that we think that might um, hit our requirements, right? So what you need to do firstly is get onto their websites, do some research. Uh, hopefully they have an area where you can kind of take a look at the features, see out of the kind of resources they might have there and kind of make your own determination whether that's a good fit, right? Then, so at that point, there's probably gonna be a form that you can fill out to be able to request a demo. Right. So once you've uh, requested that demo, what you're hoping for is that vendor is going to give you a call and then be able to do a bit of a, a quick conversation on, again, making sure that it's a good potential fit, right? So understanding your requirements, they can go ahead and provide you some feedback on how they might be able to achieve that. And then you come to a determination together whether there is the possibility for next steps here. Right? So you go ahead and schedule that demo. So once you've done all these demos, what's gonna happen here is that you're gonna find the ones that you really like, right? And so that they hit a lot of your requirements. So what you need to do here is shortlist, right? So you may start off with, with 10 recommendation. A lot of times is, you know, I don't know, at least a few, right? And so once you've done that uh, shortlisting, uh, what we would recommend at that point is asking for a free trial, right? So hopefully the trial is robust. You can get as many users in there as you like, but you really wanna kind of get in there and look at your use cases and then try to be able to accomplish that within the within the trial site now don't be afraid to ask for help right because anytime you go into any one of these kind of applications uh it could be overwhelming right you may not remember from the initial demos on how to be able to do things uh, hopefully there's some kind of support that you can leverage there to be able to do like a quick screen share for example so that you can kind of understand how to be able to accomplish that use case 
so yeah, step seven, shortlist vendors, request a free trial. Step eight is all the follow-up meetings, right? So um, again, you're gonna once you're gonna have things that are surfacing to the top vendor-wise. Uh, these meetings are usually very specific to use cases that you want to address, and a lot of times they're very technical in nature, right? They could be totally separate meetings altogether. Uh, you will need to likely schedule additional demos at this point as well, you know, maybe involving more people in the organization. Again, you know, not just the core team at this point, but this is where you might be thinking about those additional departments, right? So having somebody from finance there, having a frontline staff member there. Again, having the vendor demonstrate how to be able to accomplish that use case uh, and getting that kind of um, validation uh, from that particular colleague that yep this is this is going down the right direction now things to look out for in these particular steps so here's some pitfalls the first one is um, don't get excited by shiny things <laughs> so the lack of focus focus on those core goals and those requirements you know if the vendor is showing you something else you know that is like maybe a new feature that they're launching don't focus too much on that right go back to your initial document there and make sure that you are are hitting those particular requirements first shiny things are nice but a lot of times you know they may not provide as much value as you think uh, stakeholders make sure that you have key stakeholders uh, consulted and included uh, friction can derail your project Right? So if you can kind of get those stakeholders involved early, uh, get them in some of those demos, um, make sure that they kind of give you that, that uh, uh, approving nod that, yep, this is the right way. Then again, you are building this kind of awareness aspect and a sense of ownership, uh, that group consensus in the organization, which we see all the time now. Right? You know, whenever it comes to any of these kind of enterprise solutions, group consensus is, is quite important nowadays. Third here is also a good ability for you to kind of um, understand the vendor. Right, so vendor responsiveness. Demos are a great way to assess that. You know, how it would be like to work with that company. Um, you know, ask some good questions like, um, you know, what are some areas of opportunity for, for the product that you have? What are the things that you feel like your product does really well? So what are the strengths and weaknesses? And hopefully that vendor is up front and lets you know all that kind of good stuff there. Uh, vendor integrity, right? Do they use their own product? How do they use their internet at their own organization? Ask those questions as well. Um, if they are using their own product, you know they're probably very heavy users of the internet, so they may be able to share you some show some good best practices that way as well. Uh, lastly, there is supporting content, right? So you have this um, this vendor that you're looking at. What you want to be able to kind of do there as well is see what kind of getting started material that they have as well. You know, for the internet project, do they have good resources? Do they have a customer community that you can leverage as well, right? Where you can connect with other clients, you know, have discussion forums where you can kind of share best practices with one another. That stuff is key as well, right? Because it's not just a technology kind of focus there, right? You have to kind of focus in on that again engagement stream, the content stream, and a lot of times people that have been using the software uh, can help you leverage that or these resources that are out there as well can help you again really streamline that area of the of the project there as well so for that free trial uh, again consider big business uh, priorities first test your requirements and invite others and give them tasks to do on the internet we've seen some really really kind of in-depth uh, pilots that have been done on the trial where again you know you may have like a, a list of five use cases you get your typical staff members in there and going and saying okay again you know find the hr policy or go and post a comment on this news article or post a news article and see how they're feeling about that kind of flow there and, and get their get their uh, their 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 feedback that way as well all right, steps nine and 10, finalizing the decision, right? So you're almost near the end of your evaluation phase here. So this is all about, you know, what we kind of uh, find is, is um, confirmation that this is a good vendor that you're working with. So really the best way to confirm is through references, right? And through those references, you know, asking good questions, right? So how long have you been using the product? Um, why did you choose this particular organization uh, or a particular vendor? Um, you know, how was the start of the project? What are the things that are working really well? Uh, what are the things that are areas of opportunity? Um, and if you could do it all over again, would you buy from this vendor uh, again? Right, that's always a great question to be able to ask as well. Now, in the contract type of phase there, there's a few things that you should be looking for. You don't necessarily have to have this within the contract, but even through some kind of email confirmation, uh, total cost of ownership. 
right? One year cost, two year cost, three year cost. I think one to three is always a good number to be able to kind of uh, gauge the budget that's going to be needed for this uh, for this internet uh, program. Uh, if you're going with cloud, uptime guarantees, you know, what happens in case of an outage? What is the backup scenario within an organization? Knowing and understanding that is important. And your IT team is going to be asking those questions anyways, right? So you can kind of leverage their expertise and ensuring that it kind of fits the bill there. Uh, how can we terminate this agreement? Uh, what happens if our company grows and what is the cost for additional users? Is that price locked in? I recommend trying to locking in that price if you can. I think a lot of times vendors will be flexible in that area there. So here we are. We're at the end of our 10 steps. You've finalized your decision and now the real fun begins, right? You get to go ahead and kind of build your internet at this point. So at the end of the day, right, you're planting a seed for the future of the company. Uh, the internet uh, can be the central tool in your digital workplace. It will serve as a key knowledge base, uh, sharing of information across your staff. It will foster connections, provide the opportunity for your organization to work more cohesively as a group. It has the potential of really changing the way that you do business and interact with your colleagues. Now, when done right, it can really showcase all the good things that are happening in the company. The core internet project team is really fundamental to that success. So here are some resources that might help you along that journey. Uh, firstly, Google. Uh, Google Google knows everything, right? So you ask a question to Google about the internet. I'm sure that'll come up with a great response. Uh, second there is free vendor reviews. So Internet Compass is an example of that. CMS Wire. Uh, I like CMS Wire a lot. You know, not only do they have good vendor recommendations, but they have really good articles around, you know, current trends in the space, um, yeah, I, I have a Google alert for, for CMS Wire and uh, I get a lot of good knowledge that way as well. Third point there is paid vendor analysis. Um, one example that we have here is Real Story Group. They usually do a lot of in-depth um, um, kind of a reviews on vendors, right? Be careful with two, uh, uh, some of the paid vendors though, but sometimes, you know, from a vendor perspective, it's um, uh, pay to play, right? So if you pay more, you're gonna get a better review and stuff like that, uh, but yeah. I think that free vendor views are good. Quora is really good as well. I think like uh, I've noticed a lot of organizations that are asking or posting questions in Quora and, and getting feedback that way too, right? So that could be a good way of going about it as well. All right, that was, that was the end of the presentation. Uh, we have some time here if there is any questions. Awesome, thanks Amol, that was really informative. Um, we haven't got any questions yet, but I do have a couple for you. Um, how many vendors do you think is valuable for people to evaluate in the selection process? Yeah, I think that like um, you don't want to do too many, right? Because you're going to be kind of spreading yourself thin there. I think that if you can start with doing some due diligence on about 10 vendors, and then really quickly knocking them off, right? And see again where they match those those requirements. Um, sometimes I, what I've noticed is like usually people will do about three to five initial demos. Uh, with different vendors and then be able to shortlist from there. I think like up to three on your shortlist list is a good way to look at it because that's manageable, right? And it's also um, providing value uh, for those people that you bring in at that time. Like the thing is, is that like you don't want to waste people's time either, right? And like going through internet demo after internet demo after internet demo, it kind of gets um, uh, tough for people to remember, you know, which vendor I was looking at before, which one did I like, and just gets to be too many that, again, you want to be able to try to make that as efficient as possible and, again, respect people's time. Great. Um, how long does it typically take to go through the steps to evaluate vendors? Yeah, I think that like um, we really do see this vary. Uh, it all depends on the resources that are available on your end. Um, I think that once you have an odd, uh, internet project slated on the docket there for the for the year, um, due diligence wise, you know, usually what will happen is like you'll have a comms manager that now delegates, right? They go, okay, communication coordinator, uh, I want you to do some research here, find some vendors that we should be looking at, um, you know, go through that needs assessment initially there as well. If I, if I was to put like a, a general estimate on that, I would say probably, you know, one to two months there uh, of being able to really kind of do that evaluation phase there and then be able to sign the contract. And again, from contract to actual launch of the internet, typically we see about four to five months. Gotcha. 
Great. Um, well, we are a couple minutes over time, so I apologize for that. Um, if you do have any questions after digesting all this information, uh, definitely reach out to us and uh, we can get your questions answered um, after this. Uh, so that concludes our webinar for today. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, just a reminder that we will have the recording up on our blog within 48 hours. Um, if you are in the process of buying an intranet and you haven't already done so, you can download our Internet Buyer's Workbook to get a copy of all the information Amol covered in his presentation today. Um, it's available on our website in our Internets 101 section. Uh, lastly, we would like to invite you to get a personalized demo where we can talk to you about your specific internet needs. Uh, please send us an email at sales at thoughtfarmer.com and we'll get one set up for you right away. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, and have a great day.